some opening remarks and then take some questions. Sure. Uh, first of all, you know, give Minnesota credit. Um, PJ has his team playing at a high level. They're playing with confidence. Um, they're a good ball club, very deserving of their ranking. Um, you know, we knew going into this game because of the style of play they had uh, on offense that, you know, we would have limited opportunities. They're a team that possesses the ball and, and they control the tempo. And so it was going to be up to us to be able to get off the field on defense, which we didn't do. Uh, we give up 300 yards rushing. I think that tells the story for us. Um, you know, we haven't given up more than 200 yards rushing in a game. And to give up 300 yards rushing, uh, I thought we got out physical today up front. Um, you know, we're 7 of 11. They were 7 of 11 on third down. You know, anytime there's a differential of 42 minutes of uh, possession to 17 minutes, uh, it usually doesn't bode well for you. I thought on offense, again, uh, we had four tip balls, two resulted in interceptions, two were on third down, which are just like turnovers. And again, we continue to not get out our own way. Uh, we've got to figure this quarterback thing out. Uh, we continue, you know, Piggy goes down, Josh comes in. Uh, we tried to get Tyler to sue some work to see how he could operate our system. But because of the time of possession, I think we got 10 plays to 12 plays in the second half. And so, uh, you know, we, we tried to develop Tyler in our system to see what he can do. Um, you know, this team's not going to give up. Uh, obviously, it's disappointing to see us play the way we played today when I thought we took some steps forward last week in terms of not playing to the circumstances of the game. You know, the tip ball on the first drive, and I mean, if, you know, it results in an interception. They go down and score, and then the, the floodgates kind of opened up. And, you know, last week I thought we battled a little better and didn't play to the, to, you know, to the situations. Today I didn't see that, and, and the most disappointing piece was being out physical up front, and, and they are a big front, you know, five guys on the offensive line. But I just really thought those guys out physical us, and, and to me, we've got to uh, we've got to get that fixed. Turp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C. Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301. 251-2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. The Jackler's Law Group's successes have resulted in many distinguished awards, including Best Personal Injury Trial Law Firm USA, Maryland's Personal Injury Attorney of the Year twice, and Super Lawyers designation every single year. We succeed because we're willing to try cases, and insurance companies know it. That's why their claim reps often grumble they pay us more in settlements than any other lawyers. You deserve a great lawyer. If you've been hurt in a car, truck, or train crash, call 855-BIG-DOG-1. Questions? No. Um, any, any status on, uh, on, on Piggy yet? I, I didn't. I haven't had a chance to talk to our trainers. It was something with lower leg, knee. Uh, I think they say hyperextended it maybe. Um, we'll know a lot more probably when we get back to College Park. And in terms of Josh, was he just not uh, physically read, ready to go? Or just no, it was a coach's go? decision. You know, we put him in there, and, and, and we had planned to play him, and we put him in there early, and I, I just didn't have the confidence when he came off the field after he missed a throw. Uh, my gut instincts was that he probably isn't as ready as he needs to be. Um, I didn't have the confidence that he was prepared in terms of just my conversation with him. And so, you know, uh, Tyler has been a guy that's been taking the number two reps for most of the last three weeks with him being out. As I've said before, he's one of the few kids at the quarterback position that I think, you know, has that acumen you look for. He can throw it, he can run it. Um, and so we wanted to see how he would operate in game-like situations. And I thought he did a good job right before the half of generating a little momentum when, he, when we went out there. So we just made the decision to stick with him. I'm hoping that maybe not playing Josh allows him to get a little healthier and then again maybe develop the confidence this week for him to go out and be able to operate. So uh, we got to get the quarterback situation figured out. I, I like to settle in on a guy and allow that guy to grow in our system. Andy, you mentioned your team kind of played to the scoreboard today. How does it change one week from the next and how do you kind of find more consistency in that regard? That Man, that's the, that's the age old question with raising 18 to 22 year olds. How do you get them to consistently do something a certain way and I mean again you, you continue to coach through it you continue to show them on the film you continue to correct the mistakes uh, and, and eventually these guys will get it I mean uh, if I had that answer I think we would be having a little more success because for me you know 
every Saturday we go play, it's like Christmas for me. I have no idea what I'm getting until we get on the field. And that's not a good place to be as a coach. And I would love for us to go line up, be consistent, play with the consistency, play with the effort, every play in and play out. Uh, those are growing pains. We're playing a lot of young players. And again, I know nobody cares that we're young. And I get it. I'm not, that's not an excuse. That's young players and all of our players have to learn that you need to play the play that you're in and then do it again the next play. And you can't play to the circumstances of turnovers, adversity. You just can't play that game or it'll, you'll end up losing 52 to 10. How much do you write? How much, how much did the, uh, the two balls off the hands and the two interceptions shape the game? Well, the only reason I think they shaped the game is because we allowed them to. I mean, obviously, the tip, first tip ball uh, it was a catchable ball, and it's one of our better players, a guy that has made plays for us, and that's the part that's really disappointing when your best players, your best players should play at their best, and, and Demas is a guy that has made some plays for us. Obviously, those two tip balls, well, I think the second one was maybe a little behind them, but you know what? He's a receiver. He's paid to make those catches, and he's a guy that's made a bunch of plays for us, so again, you know, I have no doubt in my mind, and knowing the competitor that Dante is, that uh, he'll, we'll get that thing corrected. But I think they had a large impact only because when the adversity that we faced with the interception piece, uh, I felt like those circumstances played into how we played the rest of the game instead of putting your head down and grinding through it. And I thought we did some of that last week against Indiana, but this week it was not there. Wait. Uh, with the return of Davis at guard, it seemed like you had a full complement of offensive linemen. Uh, how do you think the offensive line did, and how do you gauge that rotation? you got still got a lot of guys in there. Yeah, we've got we've, we've created some depth, obviously, with the, the injuries we've had, and as I've said, I think Austin Fontaine has continued to come along. Uh, Ellis McKinney has been a, a really good leader, one of the few leaders that we're having in terms of how he does things up front. Uh, Get, you know, we didn't have enough plays. I think we had 46 plays of offense. So I do know this. When I looked at the offensive plays and the things we called, there were few, very few times where I thought that they out defense those plays. Our execution, whether it's bad balls, tip balls, uh, drops, missed, you know, missed blocks, things like that, those are the things that for me as an offensive guy really bother me because if we just execute our stuff and when you watch the tape and we're able to show our guys, that the plays are there and it's, you know, Minnesota does a better job of executing their stuff than we do on offense. And for me being an offensive guy, that's just really, really disappointing for me. To your left, second round. Come on, no, what, what did you see from the running game today? Just didn't really seem like really big one. You know, because of the way this game went, um, I, uh, we had, I want to say 12 plays in the second half. Uh, it's hard, it was hit or miss. I mean, we hit off, we hit some big runs. I thought there were a couple of, uh, plays away from hitting a couple of counters in there. Uh, we'll be able to run the football. I, I like our offensive line and the way they're coming along and our, and our ability to run the ball. We got really good running backs. But to have 46 plays in a game, that's not enough opportunities. I'm huge on getting your best players touches. And when you only have 46 opportunities and some of them are in two minute and things where you're kind of one dimensional on offense, you know, there were two of 11, I think, on third down. and you know, with two drops on third down, which to me, those are just like turnovers. So um, we'll be able to run the football. Our backs, uh, you know, continue to be the bright spot of our team. And I think when, when I go back and watch the film, I feel like that our offensive line really understands what we're doing. And to me, I've got to get the quarterback situation settled, fixed, uh, to where we can put a guy out there and let them grow in what we do. You know, the system, like I said, when you watch it on tape, there are places to go with the football. There are guys that are open. There's very few times when we watch the tape, we say, oh, well, they had it covered and it was just a bad play. So um, we've got to get that situation, the quarterback situation settled. In terms of what they were able to do offensively, not only controlling the ball, but, but the running game, yeah. getting big chunks of yardage, um, is that a matter of just the physicality up front, or is that a matter of guys just not making plays? No, I thought we got out physical, but the other thing is, is I saw way too many opportunities where we've got one guy tackling the ball. And if you've watched us play good defense, when we've played defense the way we play around here, you usually see five, six, seven guys around the ball, and there were way too many instances where you've got a linebacker tackling the back and there's nobody else around. So that means guys aren't getting off of blocks and guys aren't running to the football. And to me, those are the areas that 
we can get that corrected and we'll get it corrected on tape. We'll see it, we'll show it, correct it, and then, uh, you know, get ready for mission. Can you just follow up Chance's injury? Is that also a like me? He came back and finished the game. So, oh. again, oh, okay. uh, until I, okay. uh, I haven't even had an opportunity to talk to our trainers yet, but I, I do remember him going back okay. out to finish the game. So, I got two more so we get our players um, in here. Um, Andy. How demoralizing is it for a defense? I think there were seven for 11 on third downs, just kind of moving yeah. the change was like that. You know, going into this game, if, you, if you've studied them, I mean, these guys run the ball 50% of the time on third downs. They've kept it very in manageable situations to where third and three, third and two, third and four, because of their ability to run the ball, to not get off the field. I mean, I know for me watching it, wanting to get the ball back in our offensive hands so that we could try to keep our defense off the field and, and, and again, operate our offensive system, uh, it's tough because, you know, when you look up, it's second and five, and then it's third and two, and it's another first down. So it's mentally demoralizing. But, again, I really felt they out-physicaled us. I mean, they're big, but there's still no reason for us to not be able to control the gaps, have guys running to the football. You know, they didn't try to throw the ball. So we needed to be able to load the box up and get the ball tackled, and we didn't do a good job today. Yeah, one more. Sorry, just how much they kind of lined up and spread a couple of times getting Antoine Brooks out of the box. Was that, do you think, designed by the I mean, it's, it's, it's what we've seen each week, so it's not a surprise to us. And we've made some adjustments, obviously, to allow uh, Tuan to stay closer to the box. I mean, people are going to spread us out, put us in space. Now, they've been throwing the ball. This was the first time that I really felt that people got into some spread alignments to, to run the football. And, and it hurt us. Uh, you know, again, we've got to get off blocks. We've got to make tackles. We've got to run to the football and play good team defense. And that wasn't there today. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach.